Yo, what's going on, guys? Then my year for simple snippets, and today I'm very excited to announce that I'm starting off with a new course, which, as you can see, is named as Dynamic Web Application Development Course. So I'll be going through the entire web application development from the front end to the back end to the database connectivity and whatnot. And as you can see on the screen, this is the very first video of this course. So in this video, I'm just gonna go through all the different things that we are gonna be developing. what all technologies are going to be used what is the topic of the project or the web application the prerequisites and everything in a overview way and at the end of this video i will also show you the complete web application which is already developed by me so it's a complete prototype which is a working prototype so make sure you watch this video till the end to understand what all things you are going to learn in this free dynamic web application development course and with that being said let's start off with today's topic that is the course overview prerequisites and the demo web application Okay so as you can see we are going to be using three major aspects or three major technologies that is the asp.net for web development dynamic web development when i say dynamic it means that our web development project is going to have a front end as well as a back end so it's going to be a website which is going to be a functional website not just a static one i have a complete course on static portfolio web development using bootstrap and basic html javascript css so it's a professional portfolio website but the problem was it was a static website it did not have any functionality so in this course we are going to add some dynamic behavior we are going to add some back end code we are going to do database connectivity and the database that we are going to select is microsoft sql server so that's the second technology and along with this along with asp.net and sql server to make the front end user interface look very good we are going to be using bootstrap framework now i've already talked about what is bootstrap in the static portfolio web development course so if you have missed that you can check out the first few videos i would recommend definitely first check out the first 3 4 videos to understand what is bootstrap and you just need basic knowledge about it even i'll talk about it in this entire playlist as we move forward but you need to have a little bit of idea about bootstrap okay so let's talk in detail what we're going to be learning in this web application development course so starting off we're going to be designing and developing a complete dynamic web application from scratch so from zero directly you'll be learning how to type everything and you'll be doing it along with me i would highly recommend that you type the code completely along with me we will be understanding the concept of responsive web designing because we are going to be using bootstrap and that will definitely assist us in the front end development the third thing is we are also going to be doing database connectivity db connectivity with ms sql microsoft sql server using c# -sharp programming so it's a dynamic website as i mentioned so we are going to write a lot of code we are going to fire some basic sql queries also we are going to create tables and database in the ms sql server also and the tech used as i mentioned is asp.net and c# -sharp as the programming language you can also go ahead with vb.net but i'm not acquainted with that language i know c# -sharp. then we are going to use ms sql db and then bootstrap framework now along with this we're going to use a couple of more things also like the font or some library for icons and one very important data tables library which will help us add a lot of features and functionality to the data grid view we'll talk about it as we move ahead that's going to be really amazing so talking about the little bit of prerequisites the only thing that you need to know to take this course is a little bit of knowledge of asp.net with c# -sharp and a little bit of what is a database what is a relational database and also the basics of bootstrap now when it comes to asp.net with c# -sharp, i'm assuming if you're a it or computer science student you'll already must be having this subject a complete separate subject on asp.net or web development where you have asp.net with c# -sharp. if not you can just google out the basics just the syntax of c# -sharp, and that would be enough more than enough for our course so this course is not exactly a very beginners level course but it is definitely beginners to intermediate level course because you just need to know the syntax of c# -sharp programming language in asp.net when you're doing web development and then you just need to know what is ms sql which is a relational database provided by microsoft okay so those are basic prerequisites i'm assuming a lot of you guys must be knowing quite a lot already if not as i mentioned you can simply google these things out these are very basic things i will also be showing you a lot in detail in basics but i'm not going to be teaching you the syntax okay so that's something that you need to know and talking about bootstrap as i mentioned go check out my portfolio web development course just check out the first 5 6 videos where we talk about bootstrap that knowledge is more than enough and then you're good to go with this course so the softwares that we're going to be using are visual studio 2019 which is the very latest version and older versions will also do but i would highly recommend that you download this visual studio 2019 because they've made a lot of improvements and now it is free to download by the way we have a visual studio 
which has a community version, which is free to download for all of us. So the database that we're going to be using is MS SQL Express 2017, which is also again the latest version, again free to download. And then on top of MS SQL, we have the SQL Server Management Studio SSMS, which basically just gives you the user interface to access the database, which is behind running in the system. Okay. So SSMS that is SQL Server Management Studio is just the user interface, which helps us to see the tables in a proper view. Okay. And lastly, a browser, which is preferably Chrome because I have tested everything in Chrome. So I would recommend that you use Chrome. Now I highly recommend that you take the advanced or download all the advanced versions. All of them are free downloads on Microsoft. Yes, guys, they've provided a lot of things free and don't confuse Visual Studio with Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code ID is another ID, which is also open source, which is also free to use, which is also provided by Microsoft, but we are using Visual Studio and not Visual Studio Code. Okay. Now I'll be talking about installation and the basic process of getting things started and setting up in the next video in the upcoming videos. So don't worry, we will be going through that process also. By the way, it is super, super easy in the latest versions. It's just next, next, next and install everything at default. Earlier, there was a little bit of hassle while installing SQL Server and Visual Studio. But now that entire process has become very easy, very seamless. And hence, I'm telling you guys to download the latest version. So this is a little bit of the course details, what you're going to learn, what are the prerequisites, what is the technology used, the software is used and whatnot. Now, just to give you an overview about the topic that we are going to be developing, let's talk about that. So our web application is going to be an online library management system. So when it comes to a library, you have to maintain an inventory of books, you have to maintain a track of how many members are signed up and how many people have issued some books. You also have to keep a track of the books they are having whether their due date has arrived or not. So all these things, if you're doing it in a book, it becomes very difficult. And that's why we are digitizing the entire process. So this online library management system will assist us in doing those basic things. So in detail, if you talk about the modules, we have member sign up where new users can sign up via this module. So when I say module, it essentially would be a web page. Then we have member login where once you sign up, you can log in as a basic member. Now members can usually view books and in fact, even if you're not a member, if you're a general just user who just visits this website, you can also view the books that, that are available in the library. Apart from that, we have some admin functions. So admin would be having a separate login. Now admin can add, update, delete authors. So a book has authors, right? So we have to keep a track of those separately. When I say add, update, delete, all these processes or all these transactions are happening in the database. So we will be doing all these changes in the backend system via the c -sharp programming code. Then we have publisher management. So every book usually is published by some publisher. So we'll keep a track and details about these publishers also. Lastly, we have the book inventory. That is all the details about the book itself, the name of the book, the genre of the book, some descriptions, number of pages, cost, when, were, when was it published, who is the author and whatnot, right? So all those details we'll store in a separate table basically and admin can add, update, delete those details. And lastly, we have the book issuing process module wherein you know if you're a member you go into the library and then the librarian or the admin issues the book to you so that entry has to be made in the database we'll maintain that in a separate table and whatnot so this is that module okay all of these are essentially as i mentioned web pages and there will be some code written behind the scenes which will perform all these actions in the database now to give you a little bit of visual representation of how the use case diagram would be this is how the simple use case diagram would be this is not probably the best way but it is a very simple way to visualize things. So you can see there are three different types of users. Everyone, then we have mem everyone is someone who's not signed in just visiting the website, some random user. Then we have a member who basically signs up. So if one of these people just signs up, they become members. And the third one is obviously admin slash librarian. I've kept it single. A librarian can be separate and admin can also be separate. But for simplicity purpose, I've kept it same. So everyone can basically sign up on this website and they can visit and search books, right? So these are the two things that everyone or a person who's, who comes under this category can do. The second type of person or user is a member. So once a person signs up, he or she becomes a basic member. They can visit, obviously they can also, uh, they cannot sign up because they've already signed up and they now are members, but they can log in. And the third thing that they can do is they can update their own profile. Okay, so they can visit the site and search books also. 
but they can also update their own profile because when they sign up they will give us some basic details about their you know email address about their name about their contact details and then they can update that so apart from these we have the admin activities which are in red so these are add update delete author details again add update delete publisher details now all these things a normal member cannot do right only an admin of this entire application can do this so a member will never be able to access all these features these features will be only available to the admin so yeah this was a simple use case diagram of this entire project and it might look a little small but trust me guys we have to write a lot of code so now what i'll do is i'll just give you a complete overview about the web application we've already as i mentioned i've already developed it so let me just quickly show it to you okay so as you can see this is the complete website this is the homepage.aspx you can see from the address it's a asp web page and essentially we are running it in a master page we'll talk about that in detail as we move ahead so this is the home page and this is how it's going to look like i've used these images stock images and i've made these images so this website looks pretty good and this is you know this is the only static page the home page so if you scroll down we have you know the features that we have our three primary features then our process sign up search books and visit us we have search books we have defaulters list so people who fail to you know return the book will be shown in a defaulters list so all these things and we you can see above over here we have some navigation links home about us terms and conditions now these two would be static pages just giving some details about this library management system i've not developed them but over here on the right hand side on the top right corner you can see we have view books we have user login we have sign up so these are working links i'll just show you in a minute just scroll down on the bottom we have some footers all right reserved simple snippets link by the way please subscribe on this channel if you haven't already and share this and lastly we have one link which is the admin login so let me just quickly first show you the view books module if you just click on it so user view book page loads up and there you go you can see this is the complete book inventory i have already added some books over here and this is how the beautiful ui looks like you have the book image over here you have the title of the book author the genre of the book which can be multiple types multiple categories basically language edition pages all the details you know the actual stock which is available in the library and the available stock because let's say a user has already taken the book home so the available stock would be less than the actual stock right and now the best part is this entire grid view this is basically a grid view is a very dynamic grid view and if you just go ahead and search any book name you can easily see it over here so if i say past if i say p a s you can see the book name past forward shows up and it's by a author named amit gure by the way he is one of my friend and he recently launched this book on amazon you can check it out if you are a book reader similarly let's say if i say power p o w e r so you can see i'm searching the keyword power so you can see this grid view is very powerful you can search anything you know let's say you want to search for an author let's say you want to search for a author amit if i say a m i t you can see i'm getting a result of all the books whose author is amit so this search basically searches throughout this entire grid view for keywords and gives you the proper result so this is really amazing we're going to do this also let's see other modules talking about the user login this is how the basic user login looks like if you log in i have created some basic dummy user ids if i click on login when i click on login you can see i am getting an a button enabled which is log out this was not there before we logged in and you can see i am also getting hello ts11 which is basically the username if you scroll down i am not getting anything over here i am only getting admin login link so right now i have logged in as a basic user so a basic user basically can view books and he and she can change his her details right so if i click on this link over here hello ts11 i am being given with my user profile and this is my complete user profile so all my details are showing up over here i have done my full address because i don't want you guys showing up at my place <laughs> anyways other than that everything else is garbage i have hidden my contact number and dob and all, all those things but your basic details would be shown over here and now you can update them okay so let's say your member id and old password was 1 and 2 so if i say 1 2 3 and if i click on update you get a message your details updated successfully and the next time you are seeing old password now becomes 1 2 3 so things become updated you also have one more indication over here that account status is pending so whenever you update your profile your account status becomes pending and the admin has to approve it from his end so he or she will check what all details have you changed and only then approve your profile over here you will see all the books that you have issued 
and you will see the information of books which are due right now it's not showing anything because we haven't done it but yeah that's how it's gonna look like and you can see the user interface is very neat and tidy and this is because we're using the complete bootstrap styling so this is the basic user let's log out let's now go ahead and do the admin login so for admin login i've given link over here if you click on it let's just log in one two three okay now when you log in as an admin you you get hello admin over here and basic log out and view books so this is something that admin also can do but if you scroll down now you can see there are many links which are enabled for an admin so we have author management publisher management book inventory book issuing and user management so when you log in as an admin all these features get enabled okay so now if i just click on author management you can see on the right hand side i have all the authors already added over here and if i want to add a new author i can do it by adding the id and the author name if i want to update the author details just put in the id let's say a005 author name is amit if i just click on go his details show up over here maybe i made a spelling mistake i can update it over here if i click on update that will be updated let's say let me just add a e extra if i click on update author details updated successfully and there you go now i'm getting update over here and all these again data grid views are all search enabled so if i say amit i'm getting amit as the result how cool is that right so we're going to do all these features similarly we have publisher management publisher is someone who publishes these books all the details over here we also have book inventory which is kind of a bigger module so on the left hand side if you want to add update delete the book you can do it over here on the right hand side you can again see all the book in details We'll talk about this in more detail when we want to develop it. Right now, I'm just giving you an overview about what all things we are going to do. And you can now see that there is a lot of code to be written, a lot of things to be designed as well. So this is not going to be a very short course. Lastly, we have user management. You can see the details over here. I've blurred them out right now. And you can see you can change the account status of the members, user or members. When I say user, basically our members, they are. So you remember Tanmay Sakpal TS11 was account status of spending. Now, if I just hit TS11 and if I just click on this tick icon, account status updated successfully. Now you can see now the account is active and now the member, if I log in as a member, now I can actually, you know, update my profile and, you know, I check out, check it out. If I have any extra modules, which I enhance in future, then I can access them also. So I've just given it to show you how you can add that active, deactive and pending status features. So yeah, this was just an overview. If you click log out again, you are redirected to the home page with all the different links, all the initial links that you are seeing. And this was just an overview about this entire web application project. There's a lot of code to be written behind the scenes and we're going to be developing this in ASP.NET. So before I conclude this video, the first video, I have one request for all of you guys. Now that you know everything about what all things we are going to do, what are the prerequisites, what are the technologies used and how the application is actually going to look like. We completely saw the working design also. So now that you know this, if you're going to take this course, if you're going to take this entire playlist, please make sure you watch this videos till the end, complete the videos in a proper order. So directly go check out the playlist itself. Don't watch single, single videos. And most importantly, I would request that you guys type along with me, always type the code along with me. That's the best way to learn programming. And then it gets registered in your mind in a very good way. Also, I'm going to be sharing all the code files after we complete this course. So in the last video, when we complete the entire course, I will be telling you how to get the code. I will be sharing it with you for free with all of you guys. So don't worry about that. But I still recommend that you actually type it out. Don't wait for me to share the code. And yeah, this was the basic overview of this entire web development course, dynamic web development course using ASP.NET with C programming and MS SQL as the backend. And for front end, we are going to use bootstrap. So that's it for this video guys. Let me know in the comments if you're going to take this course. If you're excited for this, please share this with your friends. If you're an IT student, computer science student, I'm sure you must be having summer projects or some project related topics in your college, in your course. Most courses have this project development as a complete semester itself at times for BSA, IT, we have 200 marks project and all. So this will definitely help you a lot because you can reuse a lot of code from this project in your other topics also a lot of things are basically insert update delete which can be replicated which can be reused in your projects so make sure you take this course and complete it properly and yeah that's it for this video guys excited to launch this course you'll start seeing videos soon and we'll probably cover this entire course in 30 to 40 days so yeah that's it for this video guys thank you for watching see you in the next one peace